The link between large tonsils and adenoids and mouth breathing is pretty simple. When air is trying to travel through small spaces, through our mouth and nasal passageways, the air is gonna come in under higher pressure and it's gonna dry out our tonsils and adenoids, concentrating plaques and bacteria on our tonsils and adenoids. And then the immune system is gonna perceive that there's infection. So more blood will go to the tonsils and adenoids, they'll swell and they'll begin to fill up a lot larger amount of space in our airway. That makes it much more difficult for us to breathe in a situation where we already didn't have a lot of airway space. So as you can see, it's sort of a vicious cycle where we're trying to get airway space to like breathe through and the high pressures drying out, causing swelling in our tonsils and adenoids, further shrinking our airway space, causing more airway resistance. If you really think what's about what's happening in a mouth breathing situation, if we can't get enough air through our nose to get past a tighter space, it's blocked with larger tonsils and adenoids, it's gonna become necessary for us to open our mouth. It's a bigger hole to funnel air through. And we're gonna breathe in harder and faster. And that's what happens with people with these bad adenoid and tonsil situations. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the root cause of why the airway is small. In the nose and in the mouth, we'll use expanders, we'll use myofunctional therapy to create more space to try to really address the structural issues and the root cause of why we don't have enough room to breathe.